one of the things that really sums up 2020 for me is how we started this year. Bushfires was the big thing over Christmas and the New Year. Horrific bushfires like never really been seen before. Everyone around the world was seeing those images. And I wanted to do something. When we came back in the New Year, I didn't just want to start the show. I thought we've got to do something to support. And so we decided a beer. We all like drinking beer. You like drinking beer. I like drinking beer. What about a great way to raise money for Victorians in need to support all the volunteers? Then a beer. Every time you raise a beer, you're raising money. That's my kind of fundraising. So we didn't even have a name. We didn't even have a beer. It was just an idea. But Hawkers came on board. They heard me talking about the radio. You guys designed it. You came up with the name, Heroes Gold. Travis, the tradie, sung that amazing jingle. It got its own TV advert. It sold out. It raised thousands for people in Victoria that really needed our support. If you've been listening to my shows for a while, you might have picked up on something. I always think that real life, our failures, our embarrassments, our near misses are the best stories we have. So midway through the year, I start talking about, does anyone have a weakest claim to fame? Because if I ask you for a claim to fame, like a really great one, you probably haven't got that story. Most of us haven't. However, if I ask you for a very, very weak, your weakest claim to fame, you've got that. So we decided to do it as a weekly feature, your weakest claim to fame. It's now one of my favorite things. Every Wednesday morning, what is your weakest claim to fame? One of the one that always stands out for me uh, was the lady who slept in the same bed uh, as Sir David Attenborough. I think there's only like 10 years difference between Sir David Attenborough being on the bed and uh, Beck, our listener, and the guy who shook hands with the guy who shook hands with Bruce Lee. Christian, my weakest claim to fame is that I slept in the same bed as David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're looking for. Was he in the bed as well? Um, he wasn't there while I was there, but we all knew about the famous bed that David Attenborough had slept in, and I happened to sleep in it. <laughs> awesome. And as you went to sleep that night, did you think of yeah. the great man? Here in this bed. Uh, <laughs> Adam's on the line. Good morning, Adam. My weakest claim to fame is I shook hands with a guy that shook hands with Bruce Lee. Oh, we? I mean, wow. I'd like to shake hands with the guy that shook hands with the guy that shook hands with Bruce Lee. You've now, whoever that band, that guy's got a powerful left or right hand yep. that's been graced, blessed by Adam, Bruce Lee. you would have probably felt the power from the yeah. transfer of hands. Yeah, I sort of felt some sort of zen connection. You would have done. You now have a fist of fury. When I came to Australia, I wasn't ever sure whether to do Who's Calling Christian. I'd done it in the UK and it worked really well. I was really scared, would it work here? Would you want to do it? And I really wasn't sure whether we are going to do it after the year we were having in Melbourne, but you did it. People did it all over the world. We got some amazing guests. For me, it's my favorite two weeks of the year because I've got to probably work hard. The moment the klaxon goes off and I say, who's calling Christian? Sometimes you might hear me just be silent for a second or two. I'm Googling their name. Just so I've got to do an interview now. That's proper live radio. So I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoy it as well. It's like nothing else. Here are some of the highlights of this year's 2020 Who's Calling Christian. G'day, Christian. It's Shane Warren calling here, mate, from uh, Southampton in England. I'm a huge fan of the 80s. I don't know when people come over and you end up having a few drinks and the music goes on. We need to sign you up. Warney, to do an 80s show every weekend here live from your home. Let's do it. One of the Wiggles, get in. It's one of the biggest bands in the world. I remember <laughs> taking my kids to see, when you came to London quite a few years ago, the Prime Minister was sat next to me with all of his bodyguards. You got asked to delay the show because Robert De Niro was stuck in traffic. And to be fair, <laughs> you didn't delay it. Christian, it's Bill Bailey phoning from London. How are you, mate? I haven't spoken to you or seen you for ages. It's just nice talking to someone, Christian. It's really nice. <laughs> talking to anyone, anyone at all that isn't my own immediate family. What was your first film crush? Who was it for you? you? Know, the young Joel, who you were uh, getting excited by? I had by. a few. Bonzi had two girlfriends. One was Pinky Tuscadero. I, I wanted to steal one of Bonzi's girlfriends. <laughs> There's a headline for the Daily Mail. Yeah. <laughs> all right, the winner of this year's Who's Calling Christian is Ricky Gervais. Yes. Yeah. You're the overwhelming winner, Ricky, and it means oh, lovely $20,000 for uh, your charity, which is a, uh, a dog's charity. Tell us about that, mate. All dogs matter. Dogs love the idea of them handing out <laughs> like ten, twenty, fifty dollar notes for some of the dogs. Well, that's you... what I think, though. <laughs> I tell people, even if they hate me, they may as well buy my DVDs and stuff because eventually it all goes to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> 